Media City Salford, just outside Manchester, is a place that's united by creativity, where some of the biggest broadcasters and production companies imagine, innovate and play. A place of rich culture and content for over a decade, it's now home to some of the world's most exciting tech and media brands, where they live, work and create, including BBC and BBC Sport. Hello, I'm Mark Pitsy. I'm the VizRT account manager for BBC Sport. And with me today is the creative director of BBC Sport, Mr. John Murphy. Uh, John and I have uh, known each other a lot of years um, and uh, it's been a pleasure uh, working with him over the years, watching the progress of the BBC Sport technology. And here we are at Media City, uh, which is the host for the, uh, the Winter Olympics uh, coverage. You've been here about 11 years, John, at uh, Media yeah, City now. Absolutely, yes. And of course, virtual studios is, uh, I don't think it's anything new here. You've been using it a lot of years. And how, how do you think it's uh, differed over the years? And especially last year, you did the Tokyo Summer Games. How does that compare to, uh, to the Winter Olympics, which we're now seeing on, on television? Yeah, thanks for the interview, Mark. It's good to, good to be here and have a chat. Uh, so effectively, the uh, difference between the Winter Olympics uh, and um, to start off with and Tokyo is that actually we wouldn't have, we probably wouldn't have gone as big with this Winter Olympics if it wasn't for the success of Tokyo. Um, however, there are some obviously quite a lot of differences. Um, that so sort of the, obviously the main difference is that Tokyo was done from um, our Doc Ten in, in Media City, who are uh, obviously partners of ours, and we have a we have a studio agreement with them. Um, and this is from our own internal studio, which we launched in April, Green Screen Studio, which is um, only 84 meters squared in size. And um, the, the, also with that, it, it was designed by Jim Mann and Toby Kalatowski, as was the Tokyo set. Um, but obviously this is more of an internal project, so um, we weren't relying on, on partners and, and everything else. So it was all, even though the design was done by Jim and Toby, which was great, um, it was Andy Bowker in our graphics department who did the implementation with Viz and the Unreal side of it. Um, and I think the biggest thing for us with this is that actually, although we launched this green screen studio in April, and we've done many a thing from there, which probably people haven't realized because the, the, the events weren't as big as the Winter Olympics. Um, I think this is showing off now what success story it's been for us. Um, the fact was that that space was a very kind of uncreative space, which wasn't used very often. Now we've got the screen screen area, and as you can see with the, with some of the images behind us, we've created a kind of a, a sort of a winter ski resort um, wonderland with, you know, sort of five, six, seven different presenting positions. Um, so yeah, it's in, in that regard, it's, it's been fantastic. Okay, yeah. And uh, also it's worth uh, mentioning that although it's a VizRT virtual set, uh, you're also uh, using the Unreal uh, render engine um, as a collaboration with VizRT and Unreal. So how, how important was it to use you know, get the best of both worlds, if you like, with, with both of those render, uh, render platforms. Yeah, I think, um, so effectively, well, as you're, as you're fully aware, is that, you know, we've, we've had Viz in-house as our kind of graphics system um, for, for many, many a year. Um, and when we launched Prez2, this studio, back in April again, um, obviously, um, because of our already Viz infrastructure um, that we have, um, it was a bit of a no-brainer that obviously we were going to, you know, keep with that. We've got the knowledge of Viz in-house um, and, and everything that comes with it. Um, and also, but the thing, difference is obviously, as you say, the Unreal integration, because we'd, we'd already started down the Unreal um, side of things um, for, for, our, for our football work and everything else. So what we had to do was to kind of, is to take that sort of, um, great sort of rendering platform that Unreal is and is, is continually developing but also marrying it up with the knowledge we have in-house with Viz to do all of the control side of things and, and to actually you know for the using the Fusion Kia yeah. um, and you know there's still been a learning curve around it all but I think um, you know if we wouldn't have had that in-house knowledge sure. of Viz yeah. in the first yeah. place I think it would have been a lot more difficult to, at this stage to be where we are now. Sure yeah. I also believe you're using Viz Arc, um, something a little newer to BBC Sport. Is that is that a handy tool? Yeah, it's um, yeah, it is. I mean, obviously, um, without me sort of sitting there in the operational mode 
um, for it. It's, uh, I know that the, the, the team have found it really useful. I think, I think what it is is that, you know, as I say, said again before, going back to it, is that the unreal side of things in terms of the photorealism and everything else is fantastic, but it needs that studio broadcast control uh, so you know for live for live play out so that and again it's familiarity so so VizArc is I would say a fairly new product probably yeah. as yeah. A, 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 for Viz with the with the integration but again it's got the familiarities of Viz as a platform right. so that people that use it internally who know Viz have got that bit of knowledge even though there's obviously just obviously trading that's been involved and, yeah. and they've had to get to know it a, a bit more, but it's 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 just, again, yeah, familiarity. So it's been, from what I've heard, it's, you know, and again, not in the cold face of doing the operation, sure. yeah. Um, yeah. it's yeah. been good feedback. Yeah. I mean, I know you've got a very, very experienced, very talented team, um, but I'm, I'm assuming that it's still not that easy to, to get this effect. It takes a lot of time and effort. So what, what were the main hurdles that you had to get over there? It wasn't an overnight kind of switch it on and it works. So, <laughs> No. What was the main goal? No, so I think it's important probably to, to reiterate is that um, the actual footprint of the studio itself, as you can see there, um, in, of the inside studio, is the same as what we launched in April. It's the same same architecture, everything else. Yeah. But what we, we didn't want to kind of just go back into one room yeah. and, and do a presentation. We wanted to kind of open it to the outside. So yeah. what we've done for the Winter Olympic is we've gone outside of the studio. Um, and I would say that we certainly, when we started, we d didn't think we were going to have seven different presenting positions. It's a small space, 84 meters squared. You've only got one seating position with a desk, sure, yeah. which is a, can go for a one plus three. And then you've literally got a side position where you, people can stand up. Um, now it's not even big enough for people really to kind of go and stand and walk yeah, to this position. Yeah. It's got to be we've got to go to those positions under VTs or under yeah. live action. But to the viewer, you know, to the viewer uh, that's at the home, thing. It's, it's, it's like, you know, they're, they're, they're inside by a fire yeah, at one yeah, point, and then obviously yeah. when they come back, they're outside kind of with the G-lays on. And it, it, it's all about the viewer's experience because it looks huge. So to have that kind of scale, it's amazing. So I think people, because some people have said to me, it must be a huge studio to use, and I think it's not. Um, and that's, that's the beauty of the, of the technology, of the software, to kind of give that like, large scale effect. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, it's little things as well which we brought into it, which are, you know, we've got one position which is, is almost, you know, quite a distance out from the studio and it's a, it's yeah. a, it's a bench. And you know, they're, they're essentially, they're, they're, they're sitting on three green cubes. Um, you know, yeah. and again, that wasn't something that we were going to, that was m meant to be just kind of an initial maybe opening shot, which we just kind of, you know, to look, but sure. again, yeah. because it looks so great in the background, we decided to use it as a, as a, as a, another presenting position essentially. So, you know, it's all little tricks of the trade that you can use to, to make it look, make it look bigger. Uh, you know, we've done things like the Masters golf highlights. We've done um, things like Australian Open tennis. Yeah. You know, we have a we have a daily um, iPlayer show, uh, which yeah. is a football news show, which is just a kind of a small 15-minute hit, which is recorded. But again, it's just it's showing that's being used every day. Um, and then also, you know, we were able to do kind of um, some one-off programs from both um, the Euros mm -hmm. and. Um, Tokyo, that sure, when yeah. we weren't able to be in the studios, but you know, the, the main studio. So it's been, yeah, it's been fantastic in, in that sense. Well, that's going to lead me on to my uh, next question. Can you tell us what, what's happening next? Um, yeah, I mean, t to be honest, without being able to say kind of absolute names of events that we might do from there, because things are still up in the air, for, you know, we still haven't made absolute decisions, but I can assure you that, that because of what we've done in there now, um, the production teams just want to go in there and, sure, and, yeah. and want to work yeah. in there. So you know we've, you know we've got events, things like, you know we've got things like uh, coming up rugby league, World Cup, and we've got things like you know possibly like World Cup draw mm -hmm. before Qatar and, and all of this. There's um, various and even even more events than that. I would say we're, we're not always going to be able to put the effort and the time that we've done sure, into the Winter yeah, Olympics, yeah. but you know for example when we've done things like our um, you know, Australian Open Tennis, which was kind of a, a late call to go in there. Well, we just went and got a panoramic shot of Melbourne and, and put it as the backdrop. And, and that's kind of, it just gives you that sense of, of almost being there. So that's the beauty of it, really. 
Okay, that's that's fantastic. I mean, uh, congratulations on um, the success of uh, how the sets look. Um, it's a it's a great look, of course. Um, thanks again for for talking to us today, and uh, hopefully you. I'll see you soon. No, thanks. Thanks, Mark. Thank you.